My name is Emily. One of the biggest issues I see in America is the increasing division or polarization between both conservatives and liberals. What's destroying America, in my opinion, is not simply just the so-called woke left or the so-called fascist and conspiracy-filled radical right. I see an issue arising from both sides, where one party does something and the other party complains and reacts in hostility. I believe most of it comes from how the media on both sides portrays the other party. I also believe the increase in the consumption of social media plays a role as well. Nowadays, you just go on Twitter and it's Trump did this or Biden said that. Bottom line is, all I see is anger and hatred towards each other who disagree with each other. How can we get anything done if this anger continues? I mean, we see it up here, um, clearly. Um, the, how will the government on a federal level get anything done? This makes me concerned for the future of America. And I know there's no legislation we can pass that just says, you know, hey, we can all get, get along and be right. friends. Um, but, you know, there's got to be some type of strategy we right. can use so, to mitigate this Okay, division. so a few things. One, you know, I think that clarity in politics is useful. So clarity, as my friend Dennis Prager has suggested, clarity before agreements I think is sometimes useful. Where we disagree, it's important to see why we disagree and what those disagreements are. Because sometimes it turns out the disagreements are actually smaller than you thought they were when you first sat down with the person, which is why conversations are really necessary and good. It's why I sit down with people on the other side of the aisle, I would say probably more than nearly any other major mm -hmm. political figure, certainly on the right. I don't, I don't see a lot of it happening on the left either. Um, you know, as, as far as social media, it obviously exacerbates divisions. You can get echo chambers for sure. It's also true that without social media, you don't have an echo chamber. You just have one sort of media hegemony from one particular side of the aisle. So I'm very grateful that social media exists so that you can rebut some of those points. Listen, I'd be a hypocrite to say I don't appreciate social media. It's made me wealthy and famous. Um, but I, I also think that what you're really talking about is the death of institutions. And institutions are not built nationally, they're built locally. So the, the great discovery of the founders and really of Montesquieu before them is that if you wish to build social institutions, that has to start at the very local level. It starts with your family, and then it starts with your local community, your church, your religious community. And then as you abstract up the scale, you need to have less in common with people. So, you know, when I lived in, in California, I had to have more in common with my neighbors than I did with somebody who lived in New York. Now that I live in Florida, which is a much redder state, I have to have more in common with my Florida neighbors than Florida has to have with California. But that requires an agreement that at the top level of government, people are essentially going to leave each other alone. What it means is that you can do more in the local context because you agree more with your neighbors, right? You, inside your local community, inside, for example, I'll just give an example, say tax policy. So inside my religious community, we all give a lot of charity. Okay, we have a lot of charity. I know a lot of churches tithe, a lot of synagogues tithe as well. And that's very comfortable and fine because you know all of your neighbors and the people to whom you are tithing. As you abstract up the scale, the attempt to make somebody give money to a person they've never met far across the country who doesn't share their priorities is going to run into a few obstacles. And so what you need is a, is a recognition that local governance is best governance. They're going to have more agreement in social fabric at the local level. And one of the big problems with social media is it's nationalized every single issue. Every single issue becomes a national issue. Something happened in your local community, we're supposed to care if a school board in Indiana takes a book off its reading list, right? This is something we're supposed to care deeply about. When you nationalize every issue, it makes everybody feel like they're in each other's business, even when you've never met this person and this exists several thousand miles away. So this is why I've said before, on a governmental level, I'm very conservative at a local level, and as you abstract up the scale, I'm more and more libertarian because you need a more libertarian federal government because you can't have it cramming down standards that a huge number of people disagree with and hope to maintain a social fabric. Thank you.